Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take some text or an object, you can make it isometric, and then apply a cool 3D effect, all in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, you're watching Dowski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take some text or an object, make it isometric, add some depth to it, 3D extrusion, that kind of thing. It looks really, really cool. We're going to jump into it now and I'm going to show you how to do this. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator. I have a new document with some text. I'm just going to select it. The font here is Axis Extra Bold. So what I'm going to do is keep this editable. You can, of course, go up to type down to create outlines if you want. Illustrator will now render this as like just a normal image so you can do a few other things with it. But I want to keep my text editable. So we'll undo that. Now what I'm going to do is over here on the right, you can see you have the transform panel. If you don't see this or you are on an older version of Illustrator, say CS6, just go up to window, down to transform, and it's this one here and you can click on the menu icon and you can get some more options if you want to. Okay, so with the text selected, first thing we're going to do is go to our height box and just make sure that these values are unlinked. We don't want them linked together because if they are, when we scale the height down, the width will scale as well and that is a no-no. So just the height, we're going to type in 86.602%, press return and it will kind of squish our text or our object a little bit. It looks weird, but trust me, it's gonna be isometric. Okay, so next we're gonna go over to this box here. This is sheer, and we can select this, and we'll just go minus 30, and it does that. And then if we just hop along to the left, we have rotate, we'll just enter 30. So minus 30 sheer, 30 rotate. You can do this the other way around, so 30 sheer, minus 30 rotate and it will go the other way so it depends what you're going for and there we go so we have our isometric text that was that was really easy wasn't it now we're finished with this panel i think so we'll close that down and i've got my text here now from the swatches panel again if you don't see this window and swatches i've got mine docked over on the right hand side for my convenience now i've got some swatches here light blue and dark blue these are custom ones that i've made so just double click on them these are the values if you want to follow along, but just make sure you check global because when we create this 3D extrusion effect thing, uh, it's gonna be very difficult to go back in and edit some of the colors or it's, it's a bit more fiddly. It's not impossible, but if you create global swatches, essentially once we create the effect, you just change the swatch and it will update everything in that document. It's magnificent. Okay, so we've got our global swatch for light blue. I'll just show you the dark blue one as well if you do want to follow along. Now these are the values, again, another global swatch. So I'll make sure light blue is selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard. If I click and drag with this held, it will create a copy. So you can see I'm creating a copy and this is going all over the place, which is no good. We want to retain our isometricness. So I'm gonna hold down Shift as well. And you'll see when I do that, it snaps either horizontally, diagonally or vertically. So I'm gonna let go and we'll just change this to the darker blue. You may have your colors, that's absolutely fine. And I'm gonna to go to object, arrange, center back. So that second bit of text I created or your object, whatever it is, that one is behind the other one. And I'm gonna recenter these because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna really annoy me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is select both of these, go to object, blend, and select make and you've got the shortcut key there now depending on what you last did when you used the blend tool if you ever have at all um, it will might look slightly different mine looks like this which is fine but what I'm gonna do is just zoom in really quickly so you can see so I'll select everything again go to object blend and this time select blend options and just make sure that I check preview and we've got a few different spacing options here Smooth color just looks like that. It doesn't really work as well in this example. You could do specified distance, which is uh, interesting. And you can adjust the distance here by clicking in the box and using the up and down arrow keys or just, just entering a value of your choice. 
I like this one though, specified steps. So this will add or reduce more steps in between that light blue and that dark blue. So you can see as I increase this number, it automatically works out the color between the light and the dark blue. So you get a really nice gradient. But if you want like, you know, seven layers like we've got here, or if you want to just keep going up, you can really fine tune this effect. Or what you can do is just punch in something like 100 or 200. So there's so many steps that you actually just end up with a really nice gradient. And then what I can do is, well, if I move this around, it's all grouped together. But if I double click, you can see I'm up in isolation mode now up here. What I can do is actually click on one of these and move it around. Now I don't want to do this. It's gonna bend it all out of shape and mess up our, our isometricness that we've done. But what I can do is click and hold shift to move it up or down and I can make this taller or shorter. So I could go for something really short. You get this kind of almost like beveling on the corners, makes them look slightly rounded or we could just go really extreme and make this a bit higher. So it depends what you're going for. But going back to global swatches, because we have created them up front, we could go back in and edit the colors here. But it's like I said, it's a bit fiddly. So first thing we're going to do is just quickly come out of isolation mode with this arrow here. One and two. There we go. We're back to the main document. And we can just, to be honest, go to the swatches panel. And we can double click these colors, check preview. And because they're global swatches, you can see all of this change in real time. So I could go for like a purple there, maybe a blue. Ooh, that looks quite nice. I like that. That was unexpected. Can you tell? Okay, click on that. That is pretty nice, but I do prefer blue. So we'll go back to that. But yeah, there we go. And that's how you can create some isometric text or an object, and then you can create a 3D extrusion effect from that. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.